Game one for State of Origin is upon us, and you can watch all the action live and loud on the big screen as you cheer on the Mighty Blues this Wednesday at 8.10 p.m. Uh, you can enjoy the State of Origin special with burger and beer in the garden for just $19. And then, of course, you can get ready for Sunday afternoon footy as our West Tigers come off the bye and are ready for action against the Manly Sea Eagles. You can watch that as well live and loud, loud in the lounge from 2 p.m., is kick off for that one. For more information, visit West Ashfield's website, westashfield.com.au. Uh, terms and conditions apply. Drink responsibly. Uh, step up and play at the home of the West Tigers, West Ashfield. And if you haven't been to West Ashfield before, you can find them at 115 Liverpool Road, Ashfield. Welcome in to a, another episode of the West Life Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Barnett, uh, and I've got the, uh, the the OGs team with me tonight. And uh, boys, it feels like we were only doing this yesterday, but um, here we are, another West Life Podcast. Um, yeah, and anything in the news today, we'll, we'll try and find something to talk about. But no, of course... Uh, Michael Maguire has lost his job at the West Tigers. We kind of expected it coming, and Rob kind of predicted that uh, they'd hide it in the uh, the midst of Origin hype. But um, thanks to all those, seen plenty of people joining us live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter coming in. If you haven't already, uh, as I said last night, um, give us a follow on Twitter. We're pushing towards that 1,000 mark, which looks pretty good. So. Yeah, if you haven't haven't followed us on Twitter, if you don't have a Twitter, make a Twitter. Follow us. Don't use it. Just give us that follow. Uh, same with the Instagram. Same with YouTube. Give us a sub. Give us a like. Um, that all helps. Yeah, helps us grow the show. Um, fingers crossed. My audio sounds a bit better tonight, boys. I got a a new mic to, that uh, hopefully sounds a little bit clearer, a little bit better. So um, apologies for last night for a bit of shitty audio coming in we're hoping it all uh the technology helps us on this one because we've got a stack of people lining up to go hard uh on the vents so and one man uh he's back he's just he's making a cameo we'll call him a, a, a guest star at this point shane calder the uh the news dropped today and that's enough to awake awake a sleeping giant um, you, you're a giant compared to me. I'm five foot eight, so everyone's a giant to me. But you're literally a giant to me. So we've awoken you. Welcome back. Thank you. Well, wow. thoughts? Yeah. What are your thoughts on this whole uh, saga? Um, it's pretty embarrassing, to be honest. It's embarrassing being a West Tigers fan. Um, we just seem to be going around in circles. It's like, I don't even know what to say. Um, I knew it was coming. I've sort of known it was been coming for two weeks. So it's no surprise that it did happen. Um, like, I, I don't know. It's just sad for Madge. Like, he finally, finally has, like, he's finally getting the team he wants next year. We have no salary cap issues. All of a sudden, Bang fire him when he's finally starting to get his role on with this team, really starting to get him firing. Like it's just so stupid. It just makes the board look so dumb. It makes Sheens look so stupid. It makes all of them. Oh no, no, we're sticking. We're really sticking by Madge. We've got his back. That's literally been happening for what the last three, four months. No, no, we have still got his back. We still got his back. Slowly, the knives are getting jammed in there. Just a couple more, a couple more. And it's just like, it just makes us look stupid. Really, it really does. Um, like, as as it said just there, like, we're finally getting some excitement back about this club. We're stable. We were actually going somewhere. Like, we were stable for like just that little bit. We, were, we had players wanting to sign to us. We had. I don't know. It's just, it's just really, really frustrating. It's just, it's really just stupid, to be honest. It really is just absolutely stupid. It's just, 
it's an easy way out for people who shouldn't be in charge of a football club. That, that's really what it is. It's it's a poor board who really don't know what they're talking about. They don't know footy. Like I spoke to Lee last week. Oh, no, not last week. Sorry, last year. We spoke to Lee at the end of the year and he was that deluded that he thought this team was better and would do better than what we had last year. Last year wasn't that great, but he was that deluded that all these young guys coming in and would still be better. Like, what do we have? Like eight or nine players with 50 games or less, like something like that, who are in our like regular starting side at the moment. How, how are you meant to do good when you've got that little experience? Just, it's just mind blowing. It's just, just mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just, it, it is embarrassing, hundred percent. Like, just to be a West Tigers fan. I mean, there are plenty of fans. Um, we're going to get plenty of people on tonight, and there are plenty of fans out there that are happy with this decision. And um, I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And at the end of the day, it's only footy. No one's died. Um, yeah, it's not war or anything super serious. It's only footy at the end of the day. I mean, a guy's lost his job, so it's that's sad, as you said, um, Ted Shane. But, Rob, you um, you picked this one like a dirty nose coming coming into it. You basically said he'll probably be sacked just like, oh, we just hit the 100 too. So raise the bat, boys. Our first 100 in the stream. Um, I guess one man's trash is uh, another man's treasure and... Uh, the club is trash, and our uh, our viewers are the treasure. Thanks, guys. It's a um, big show on a Tuesday night. No footy to distract us tonight either. So maybe they should maybe they should have hit it Thursday night, Rob, when we're half watching the football, half doing a podcast. Yeah, it wouldn't um, surprise if they they took the easiest and the most logical time slot to yeah. do it. Uh, we knew they were never going to do it on Thursday or Friday because you know ultimately we've got a game to prepare for. Uh, I can't, was kind of hoping this morning, you know, I like was thinking, geez, it's not going to happen. And then sure enough, I jinxed it. And uh, we got the message uh, this afternoon. Uh, I feel a lot like Shane and welcome back, Shane. Um, you know, it's disappointment, it's emptiness. It's honestly, I'm not even angry. Like I, I, like, I want to rip people apart, but I'm just not angry. It's Shane summed it up perfectly. They're all stupid. They are dead set stupid. Most of the guys they got, like Tim Sheens is making the decision. He's rehashed. You know, we got Warren McDonald there. He's been rehashed twice. We got Brett Kamali as interim coach. He was our under 20s coach in what, 2015. Rehashed. Everyone is rehashed. We got the same duds on my, on that board that have been there for over 10 years. Not all of them, not all of them, excuse me, but a lot of them. We've got Justin Pascoe, who's been there seven years, as opposed to Michael Maguire, who's been there three and a half years. I, I accept the, the, the match haters, or not the match haters. There, there's a lot of people don't think match should be there based on the results. Okay, I can accept that just looking at it straight up. But if you break it down, how the hell did we finish ninth in his first year? Have a look at that squad. Have a look at what we had playing New South Wales Cup. So I actually think it, when we came ninth and 11th, we actually overachieved. We didn't underachieve. We overachieved. We wouldn't have even got close. Uh, Matt is the only one that actually has won a premiership and knows what they're talking about. And now we've got a board that, admittedly, they did the right thing. They actually accepted that they haven't got a freaking clue as to what they're doing in terms of football now. So they put all their eggs in Tim Sheens, who hadn't coached in the NRL for 10 years. Great footy brain, accept all that. And to be fair, I actually heard him tonight on NRL 360. He got some pretty heavy questions thrown at him, guys, and he actually handled them reasonably well. But when you realise now that Madge has been working for a board and a head of football that have known for days and weeks now that they were getting rid of him, that's a low act and they're actually a bunch of snakes. So I don't need to swear to make them feel bad. They are a pack of snakes. As a fan, I'm not proud to be associated with them. I love our colours. I love our team. But in terms of the board... I wouldn't, you know what, on them, guys. They're, they're just, they're not worth it. And they've just set us back another few years. They actually have set us back another few years. So I don't know where we go from this. Um, look, I don't want to regurg 
regurgitate too much of what we said last night. Uh, we've got a lot of fans that want to come on. We can interact with them and, and, and say a little bit more down the track when they ask us things. But, yeah, it's it's a sad day to be a West Tiger, in my opinion. It's, it's not all about wins and numbers. You've got to have a vision and see what the hell's going on. We've got so many positives, so many good guys coming in. This development coach stuff, what a crock of shit that is. But anyway, mm. let's get the fans on, guys. Look, it, well, um, I'll just give my 10 cents how I'm feeling. I'll, I'll be quick. We'll get um, your mate uh, going under the alias of Madge on in just a second. But um, look, for me, if in, in 12 months' time, we'll look back on if this will be a bad or a good decision. The, the first thing and the main thing I'm worried about is the re-signing of particularly Jackson Hastings, um, whether or not Adam Dwight, I, Adam Dwight here, I'm not that worried. I'm pretty sure he'll stay. He loves the club and will stay with us. Dane Laurie's, he's got an offer on the table um, as well. So it's the Jackson Hastings factor for me that I'm the most worried about. So um, behind the scenes, who knows? There's so many people, I don't know about you boys, but I've got so many DMs today saying, oh, there's apparently Appy's not coming. Apparently Papa's not coming. Like they've got clauses in their contract. There's all this like rumors floating around. So when when that all settles down and we real if we can if we realize that the roster is in twenty twenty three, four, five, as Tim Machines was going on about, he's thinking two twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, like he's building um, a solid foundation for the future. So he says, um, if that means that the, the the plays we're still getting for 2023 and the one ones we're expecting to have beyond, then uh, then we'll see. But if it, if they just if it ends up being bloody like Paul Green or um, Flan- Flanagan or someone's just thrown um, thrown in there or Nathan Brown, I mean, my God, like if um, the guy that just <laughs> follows the wooden spoon around, but like, yeah, it's just yeah, Josh, it's all in hindsight. I like I, I feel for Maz, you, you the three of us we spoke to him that day at Lincoln Oval and were so impressed buying. And a lot of people were saying, look, it's a bit. Sheen said it himself, it's a business, and they've got to make business decisions and that sort of thing. But I'll, I'm, I'm annoyed. I'm embarrassed, but maybe who, who knows? Maybe in twelve months' time we'll realize that it's for the best. Maybe in 12 months time, we'll still be shit and be like, well, maybe we should have kept match. So yeah. the, Josh, the next steps, a, next steps for me. If it's a business decision, why have we brought back Warren McDonald twice? He's been a failure already twice. Why, why have we bought him twice? Easy for Sheens to say this guy failed, that guy failed. Why did we bring him back twice? You know, he, he's know. just, he's, and he's in charge of recruitment and he's failed our recruitment previously. So why is he back there? So, you know, there, there's a lot of things we can say about it. I'll, I will make you guys feel a little bit better. You wouldn't have heard it. Uh, Nathan Brown announced on NRL 360 due to family reasons, et cetera, et cetera. He will never be taking up a full-time head coaching role again. So we don't have to worry about Nathan Brown being West Tigers head coach anymore. Well, uh, yeah, well, that's a real uh, slap in the face for... Uh, no, I was just trying to make a joke. Remember how you slapped Trent Barrett in the face? When he was coaching the Dragons. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, best of luck to him. He, he'll find a job um, doing something. So, I mean, that, um, that's good news for us at the very least. So, who knows? Yeah, the next step. Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm interested to hear both sides of the argument. If you, if you Your argument, uh, opinion is that the results are on the board um, – and he kind of deserved it based on numbers. And yeah, come on and argue that. But um, right, I will bring up Madge. Uh, he wants to go under the alias. It's a pretty coincidental name. I don't know why how he came across the name Madge, but um, we'll bring him bring him on. Madge, uh, not the Madge. Uh, good. A different, good evening, a different guys. Madge. How are you going? Good evening, guys. Good evening, Madge. Right, um, uh, of my understanding, well, mate, just 
uh, with Madge, just we'll start off with Madge. Um, all this talk that he can't um, bring good players to the club. Can someone name me a player under Tim Sheens, apart from Adam Blair or Gareth Fellas that we got from England. What other big name have we got from from and to to our club? Um, Scott Prince. You know, we, we've. Is it there? Yeah, yeah but Scott Scott yeah. Prince. Yeah, one? Scott Prince. That was yeah from the Cowboys. Um, yeah, had a lot of injuries. Apart from that, what other big player? I don't think it's the coaching that aren't, can't bring players because I know for a fact TPJ um, loved Madge, um, wanted to play for Madge, but for some problem from for some reason um, we 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 missed out on TPJ. Yeah. Um, I can Pango guarantee. Junior. I was if if. If, sorry, Pang. Just for those who are like, I, I assume most people know TBJ is Pangai yeah. Junior. They Pangai Junior. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was one that was willing to play under match, but like I said, um, for some reason we couldn't get match to the club. Uh, sorry, um, TPJ. Um, I've got bad news. Uh, more more bad news coming. Look, I, I was a fan of match leaving if we went for the likes of CC. That's coming. Um, Serato, from yeah. the system from Pembroke, that's correct. Unfortunately, the direction that I've been told um, will be going for Shane Flanagan. Um, with Shane Flanagan, we're going to get a package deal uh, with Kyle to the club My for God. next year. Um, there's going to be worse news, um, and unfortunately, justice for you, Hastings won't be at the club. He will follow Madge to a Sydney club. Um, Adam Dewey will not re-sign beyond his contract. Um, there's also talk J.O. and um, um, Stefan. Um, they'll, they'll fans of match. So there's going to be worse news for, for, for us like in, in coming weeks. But my information and, and a good source is Shane Fanagan will be the coach for um, the West Tigers. And Any... I, I believe it's going to be a backward step. As you can tell, um, Hastings, uh, moving Hastings to halfback, uh, Brooks at 5'8". Dane Laurie, um, he's, he's still iffy of, of signing with us as well. He's not guaranteed. But in throwing a Appy for next year, that's a quite okay spine that we, we've had for a long, long time. Um, unfortunately, by losing match, we're going to lose the play players such as... Um, Guaranteed, um, Jack, Jack Hastings and um, Adam Dewey. People are blowing up in our comments. Obviously, pretty, um, yeah, pretty annoyed to hear this. And this is basically the number one thing that I feared. With obviously, without giving away who you are and how, um, how how you you're getting these news. Is there anything you can tell us? To basically, I'm not saying we we don't we have no reason to not believe you, but like it's pretty shocking, shocking stuff. So how how uh, from, how credible is management. the source? Player, player management. So is this? I mean, if it's from player managers, I mean, player player managers can be pretty. Uh, obviously, they got one thing in mind, and that's making money. Is there? There's there's definitely nothing. Behind the, the player managers using no, this as, as an excuse def, to make more money, definitely not. And and I can guarantee you. And I spoke to um, Rob earlier. Hastings um, was not going to play. His his main for this week. He's not playing, regardless of his injury or not. Hastings took the worst uh, out of um, the news today, and he was not going to play this week, regardless of his injury. Well, um, Shane, any thoughts on this? I hope it's not true. <laughs> That's all it sort of comes down to. Um, really, really hope it doesn't happen, but would not surprise me. Um, as you guys know, I've spoken to Jimmy Tamo quite a lot and he had nothing but praise to give Madge. Um, even when all the stuff was going down end of last year, I was talking to Jimmy and as he said to me, one of three people needs to go coach, CEO, or head of football. 
what happened? <laughs> Had a football win. Adam Hardigan. So it seems that everyone else seems to be dropping other than the one person who probably should be in Pasco. So yeah, it's just it's frustrating, but look, I, we all we all knew it was coming. Like it, that's it's the repercussions now that we're going to watch unfold over the next say 18 months. That's that's what's really going to tell us what's happening. Rob, you, you kind of kind of know Adam Dway here. To hear, um, I mean Jackson, we know has a relationship with Madge, with Adam, um, yeah, as as well. Obviously, he came over for Madge and played with him at South. But um, I, I didn't honestly didn't think Adam would be, uh, yeah, this coming to this basically. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I spoke to our caller, Madge, um, earlier today when I questioned about what he said. So, obviously, um, he said that, you know, we're going to be losing some players. Now, Phil Gould came out with something similar to this very recently last night. He said the Tigers will lose a bunch of players if Madge goes. Um, I've tried to contact uh, Jackson Hastings' management tonight, and he respectfully replied to me but he would not give me an answer in terms of what they what they were thinking or what they were doing, and, it, and it's just too fresh. I asked him how the injury was, and he, and he said it's not great. So even though Jacko's named, I'm not assuming um, Jacko to be named uh, this week. Uh, one thing our caller did mention was that Adam Dway, he would be okay to play centres at Canterbury because he's got a relationship uh, with their uh, one of their Lebanese up-and-comers, uh, Karaz, there, so... Um, that you know that that kind of does make a little bit of sense. Um, I've heard some more mail tonight that we're really going hard for Seraldo, which kind of contradicts what our caller Madge is saying tonight. So look, it's all speculation. We can we can go into panic stations and just say you know the world's going to end, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I just think we just have to see how it all plays out. I, I don't think our club really knows what they're doing. Um, I, I'm still baffled as to why Madge wasn't removed at the end of last year, if any. Uh, I've been criticised for being a Madge defender. Yeah, he's had three and a half years where we didn't make finals. How we were supposed to make the finals was three years, I haven't got a clue. I thought we could with the squad and the cap that we had. This year was the one time we didn't have a problem with the squad in terms of cap space moving forward. But then we've had a plethora of injuries. So I, I don't I don't know. Like I just, you know, possibly it would be the right thing to have got rid of him. But in terms of who Madge is as a person and direction and what he wants to achieve. And I think he's the only bloke in that sort of area above the players that knew what he was doing and knew knew where he was focused. And no matter what was being said about him by the board or the CEO or Tim Sheens or anyone, he just kept trying to do his best. And let's face it, guys, he probably should have gone six or seven weeks. We all thought we were incredibly good. So I think if we'd have suffered a big loss to Paro, Madge would have been gone six weeks ago. And then we got back-to-back -back wins and they thought, well, hang on, we better hold our decision. So, look, every, everything our caller is saying, I'm not going to say it's not true or anything. I mean, I've been told by our caller, well, not by our caller, Madge, but someone who knows our caller, Madge, that his mail is generally pretty good. Um, if it's true, we're absolutely screwed. But, I, you know, let's just see how things play out um you know we've got to make a lot of moves tim sheens did say this afternoon he, he actually had a really good interview on on the nrl 360. he said that you know they are going to have to commence talks with hastings and way here etc etc because they're all eligible to talk with other clubs you know in six months from now so um let's just see what the club does but the one thing i thought we had we had juniors coming through we had a couple of good signings all we needed was a bit of stability and just show that, you know, we're a solid club. I don't know what coach would want to work for this board, guys. It's it's an absolute place to end your coaching career. So whoever wants to come and have their go, maybe someone like Flanny going to be desperate enough because no one wants to take him. But, yeah, I can't imagine, like, if Seraldo comes here, if he fails, he'll never get another gig. Mate, if, 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 this, if this is true, legit, there'll be riots. I reckon, not riots, protests outside... Um, the center of excellence. Like it's this is this is absolute. There'll be absolute bullshit if this 
happens. It's it's very hard to believe, but I mean, um, people blowing up in the comments, Rob. They're saying because obviously, Madge here, our caller is under an alias, and like people, like they have no, um, because there's no name behind it, no face behind it. They're saying they're finding it hard to believe. What is there anything you can say to give our Madge here? some um yeah like why why the guys on the that are watching right now and listening should believe what madge is saying with all respect to you man it's just the comments yeah. are going uh, off I, i've only spoken to madge today uh our caller madge i can't say whether what he's saying is true or not i i know he believes it to be true but i'll tell you one thing that uh you and i and shane laughed at a few weeks ago guys when we heard that rumor about Madge and Jacko going to Canterbury after, like, you know, it wasn't too long after we'd had a couple of wins against Power and South. We just laughed it off and said, what a bunch of idiots. Who the hell is going to believe that? This was a month ago, not even. Now, now when we hear it and the position's available and our position's gone, you kind of don't think it's too silly a thing. They need a halfback. You know, they need it. They need a coach. And you can see that Madge was squeezing what he could out of the playing group. So, I don't know if it's going to come true. I, I, I actually think Madge is was so heavily invested in our club, even if he wanted to take another gig like the Warriors or the Bulldogs, I can't see him taking it up this year. Whether he agrees to it or not, that's fine. I, I believe he'll take most of the rest of the year off and not start till next year. I think I, I don't think it would be a good look for Madge to take over one of those clubs straight away. So, but in terms of... Rob, your internet's a bit. Um, a bit like Tim sketchy. Sheen's and Madge. Have you got? Can we hear me, guys? Yeah, yeah. You just yeah, in, your internet's cutting, cutting in and out a little bit. But um, yeah, we might. We've got, I've literally got people like I've, our room is full at the moment of of callers trying to get in. We might go. Oh, I was about to go to Rob, Rob Aaron, but um, oh, he's back. Uh, Madge, any any final words? Because we've got a heap of calls to go through. But is there anything else you'd like to say? Are you a West Tigers fan? Uh, a, a mad West Tigers supporter. Um, okay. Yeah, and and, yeah. and the information, like I said, that the, he's the guy that's provided this has been spot on in in previous times. Okay. Um, and I can yeah, my, he's he's assured me that Shane Flanagan will be the head coach. Righto. Well, thanks for your inside word. I mean, Tom. Time will tell. I don't know. It's it's very fresh and very raw. Maybe the play the players are, um, yeah, emotional and yeah. We'll we'll see what happens. But um, and, and it's funny just, because and and yeah. what surprises me is Shane Flanagan has actually been quiet for the last week and a half. Um, we, we haven't heard from him uh, hey, for a week and a half now. Actually, well, he was the, I saw him in the Bulldogs game against us. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like on TV, he was always on yeah, yeah, 360 yeah. talking. I don't, I haven't seen Shane Flanagan um, uh, on television for for a while. Yeah, for a week and to, to, Not to such a week a bad two. Thing, in my opinion, Madge, are you um, a ticket holder? What's that? Sorry, are you a member or a season ticket holder? Yeah, I definitely am. And if I if they the, the news is correct, Shane Flanagan, I would not be a member anymore. I, I paid for the yeah, platinum tickets, two of them. Yeah. So you don't want this to happen, obviously? No, nah, definitely not. Yeah. Um, okay. he's, he's a cancer to rugby league uh, and to the game. Okay. So you'll be yeah. at the rights with us? A hundred percent. Like I said, I, I was happy for Match to leave if we got an upcoming um, coach that they, they predict in is going to be the future. I would have been happy for, for Match to go if it was... Um, uh, what's his name, Cameron, uh, whatever his surname is. Serato. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. If we if we got yeah. him, I would have said, okay, if we lost those players, you know, by getting a youngster and no one knows about, different story. Yeah. Uh, but going to Shane Flanagan, which I don't think he's going to do any good for us, it's like I said, it's like, said, it's like a virus, a cancer to all clubs he's been, or the Sharks, what he's done, and he's leaked all those information about the Bulldogs, mm. uh, in the last six months, um, you know, he, he and, and Benny Elias was the one that gave Buzz the info of of last night. It was our mm. our icon Benny Elias that leaked that? 
to to how does, on there. How does Benny Lewis, How does Benny Elias? I mean, he doesn't work for West Tigers or anything. Yeah, he, how he, he? He, he's he's well connected with the board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he's the one that leaked uh, leaked it to um Buzz last night. Mm. There you go. Well, um, yeah, great. Uh, I mean, a, a very shocking, shocking. I mean, in all respect, a shocking way to start the um, shocking is in unbelievable. Um, yeah. So, thanks, thanks for that, Madge. We'll um, time will tell, and then if um, all this is correct, we'll get you on for um, some more uh, inside word and predictions in the future. No problem, yeah. boys. Cheers. All Thanks, right. man. Hopefully, Thank you. see ya. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Uh, right. So, a couple of someone, I can only fit 10 people in this room. So, if someone just tried to come in. I've sent links to a few people. So, if yeah. you just tried and you couldn't get in, um, come in. We're going to bring, um, not for the first time, from Bounce of the Ball podcast, Rob, uh, Rob Aaron is. Um, well and truly got his black, gold, and white on display. Uh, Rob, now we've dealt with a Madge, two Madges. Now we're going to deal with two Robs. So Rob A, Rob B, Rob Rob A. How um, yeah. What are your thoughts this evening? Uh after um last caller's comments, um, a bit unsettled. Uh, <laughs> even more so than what I was from the news of Madge being sacked today. Yeah, hi. How are you? Anyway, fellas, good to be on again. Confused and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I don't know where to start, mate. So, Sheen's had some interesting comments tonight. So, uh, the narrative seems to be development coach. Um, not too much further detail on what that actually entails. Um Interested to hear your thoughts, boys, on Kamali's immediate impact and some of the changes that he looks to make. So I did notice earlier today when the team lists were released this morning um, that young Jakey Sipkin was at our starting number nine and then another team list was released this afternoon and it had Little moved in and Simpkin moved over to the reserve bench. Um, I don't even think even like on the bench, but like, and they moved and um, I believe... Um, uh, the young half, what's his name? Jock Madden. Jock Madden. Yeah, Madden. He's been moved to the bench as well. Um, and yeah, I'm just also interested in what your ideas around the concept of hiring a, a caretaker coach and what, what that means for the actual rest of the season. Uh, Shane, you go. Um, I find that a bit weird. I would have thought that they would have tried to put one of the assistant coaches that are there now in as a like as a caretaker. Um, the fact that they got Kamali, I thought that was a bit odd. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't really seen heaps about what either Kamali has said, and I definitely don't watch 360, so I didn't watch that Sheen's interview. But um, yeah, I, I would have thought they would have said done some like a joint sort of thing with the two co the two assistant coaches that they've got there at the moment that sort of makes sense to me but um i don't know i think this breaks up a lot of the stability that the players did have and i don't think we're going to see good results come out of it that's my opinions rob 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 b uh, look, the, the development coach stuff, I, I had a good chat with Rob earlier, by the way, on his podcast, uh, Bounce of the Ball. Give it a go, guys. Um, I believe that a development coach has your players ready before they get to first grade. So whoever our first grade coach is, is not going to be training someone to be that player we want them to be by the time they land in first grade. And I'd give the example of, as I said on Rob's podcast, uh, the Penrith young centre and winger, uh, Taylor May and Isaiah Tago, they've come into first grade this year and Penrith haven't missed a beat. They actually look stronger and they basically lost Matt Burton, Brent Naden, and they lost uh, Brian Toto for half of the year. So a development coach, you don't need that development coach to be a first grade coach. Your first grade coach just has to get the best out of your first grade team. So that that's what I'd say about that. Um, I actually forgot the first part of your question, Rob. But um, yeah, it's that—that—that's my thoughts on it. I don't—I don't know 
where we go from here. In, uh, oh, sorry, that was the other part of your question. Um, you, you mentioned about having an interim coach now. I, I'd say the reason yeah. for that is, is if we told Michael Maguire he's there for the rest of the year, but we're getting a new coach, then obviously, not that Michael can't do it now, but then Michael Maguire could be speaking to players within our squad and say, hey, come and follow me to Canterbury or New Zealand or wherever the case may be. Sheens' reasoning is that he wants to have a coach in place that can pick his future squad so the next coach can't blame, you know, I say, well, Michael Maguire got that player or this player, et cetera, et cetera. The new coach will then have his own choice of future recruitment. So that's the excuse they're running with now. Um, I'm kind of a bit like Shane. I don't know why Brett Kamali is the interim coach because Brett Kamali is meant to be the coach of the juniors in Pathways. Um, and, you know, Betsy's meant to be kind of heading it. So, again, we're, we're just chopping and changing as as it's required. So we've, we've got Kamali in one position. Now we're putting him in another position. Why can't the attacking and, and defensive coach run the team for the rest of the year? It's, you know, that's up to Tim Sheens and, and it's his call. So, like, you know, Tim Sheens has won four premierships. I haven't. But just as an outsider looking in, you've got to ask why do you keep chopping and changing people from their different roles within the club? So... Uh, as I said last night, I think the club doesn't have a clue and the fact that they know that they don't have a clue in terms of rugby league, they've put all their eggs in Tim Sheens's basket and they've said, Sheensy, whatever you say, we'll go with. And this is the this is totally the decision of Tim Sheens. We really can't be blaming anyone else, even if they held that view. Tim Sheens is the one that actually made the decision. And to his credit, he admitted it tonight. Like I thought it was pretty weird that a 71-year-old had to face a 15-minute interview while our gutless CEO is just hiding in his office, probably having a nice baked dinner and sitting down with his wife and kids, never faces the music, never takes accountability for anything, just leaves it up to the old man to face the face the music. But that's typical Pasco, gutless wonder. Yeah, he's managed to distance himself um, from this fairly easily. Like we mentioned today um, in our conversation, really slick little PR move by um, dropping it in between the sacking of Brownie and origin tomorrow so it's just going to be dusted you know under the rug um yeah so i don't know about you josh did you actually catch the two team list today and what did your what are your thoughts on kamali's appointment and any he's looking to like stamp a bit of an impact and make some changes straight away um i mean it just shows that the rest of the season's a bit of a write-off and they're just gonna they're thinking about 2023 um from from here on here on in, um, sorry, he's got to answer. Matthew, am I in the beers? No, it's it's. Um, sorry to disappoint you. It's sparkling water. Mount Franklin. If anyone's from Coke works, uh, anyone who works for Coke is listening. I drink these by the gallon full. If you want to sponsor the show and send me some cartons, uh, go for it. Because I drink a lot of them. Um, anyway, back to Preck Morley. Um, Gotta love a tangent, and uh, yeah, it's. I mean, who knows? Give it, maybe it's a trial. If he, if the boys come out and play well under him, and his tactics seem good, maybe it's. Um, maybe it's a job interview. So that's what I felt like when I was watching him be interviewed um, this afternoon by journalists, and also mm-hmm. with the vibe I've gotten from his um, immediate impact and the changes that he's made straight away. It feels like he's trying to stamp it his own do you know what i mean and like he's not just being a caretaker in that sense he's trying to put his spin on the on the squad so be interested to see how it unfolds yeah i mean rob the answers the most questions for me tonight is like i i don't like i've got no fucking clue for this club anymore knows, I just, yeah sorry <laughs> disillusionment hey but um <laughs> yeah but the way yeah, the that's what Guys, the way Sheensy answered that kind of question tonight about uh, when are you going to appoint your next coach, he basically said, if I t- if I give you guys a date or a round that I'm picking a new coach, you're going to hold me to it. Um, so he said, I'm not committing for at least a month or two. Now, the West Tigers are a pretty dumb club, but they're not stupid enough to realise that Manly's a winnable game, especially without Tom Trebojevic and possibly Cherry Evans not backing up should he get injured in origin. But I know Canterbury is obviously a winnable game. They had to get rid of Maguire now on the off chance that we won two games in a row and then we face a New Zealand club who's in crisis. So they had to get rid of him now. I think, Rob, you're right. I think Kamali is 
look, if Kamali pulls off five or six wins in a row, we might be talking about him as a as a potential head coach. But we're legitimately going to have to consider him. Yeah, they're going to have to consider him. But the second we have a loss that where or or a bad performance in a game, they'll be straight. You know, I'm sure they they're still trying to get Seraldo. I'm very sure that's their number one priority. But yeah, I, I would say it's a little bit of a trial. And the way Kamali did speak this afternoon, he he was taking it on board like this is his opportunity of a lifetime. And really, it is, especially with the players coming back. Like, if we ever let Dwayne take the field again, geez. Yeah. Yeah, that's that came a bit of a um, shock today. But in the end, you'd be used to this, Josh, this year, being told that your gun players not allowed back from an ACL injury. You just kept on prolonging it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you obviously referring following to you it. over to the NRL. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. I've mentioned on the show before uh, yeah. the parallels between both teams. Both teams, both the, the Denver Nuggets, for those obviously most regular listeners know, you're talking about Jamal Murray. Obviously, did his ACL literally within um, what he did it a year ago, April last year, and then yeah, yeah, then Adam Dwayne he does his, and then Sean Bloor does. So literally, all my favorite. Athletes are doing doing ACLs, but um, someone's got a voodoo doll out there. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. Someone, the sporting gods hate me. Maybe it's all the swearing that I do on the air. But um, <laughs> yeah, it sucks. But um, yeah, it's just another thing we're dealing with. I mean, the injury thing. Um, when it comes to Madge, there was always that talk that he overplayed players and made players play injured. We lost Madison over this, apparently. Um, Who's playing? I've got to. We've got to somehow work up the the courage to support him playing for the Blues tomorrow night. But um, I mean, is is maybe a ne- the next coach? Maybe a younger coach, a bit uh, more fit for this generation. Maybe maybe he's better. Maybe the old school coaches aren't the way to go. Maybe your John Morris's or your Brett Kamali's even. Might relate to the the Gen Zers that are in our team. So, well, we said last know, night Josh, the the 2019 version of Madison is the best we've ever seen play, and and that and he developed under Madge. So there's your development coach right there. I'm not saying he's done it with everyone, but you can't say he hasn't developed players. I've, I've told you three times already. Leilua was not even playing 40 minutes Luke. at St George. Yeah, he plays 80 minutes now. Like the the, the development coach. Uh, line that Tim Sheens didn't Dan Laurie only played like one or two games before he'd come to the Tigers, and now he's like, yeah, exactly. Like, like I know it, there's a handful a of, of clubs right now who'd want him as their first grade fullback. So you can't say the guy doesn't develop players. It's a joke. It's a, yeah, I think it's a bullshit line myself. Um, yeah, whoever takes over, they're going to have to deal yeah. with this obvious faction that you know, there's two factions within the club. They're probably going to be happy now, but you know. What's it going to take to divide them again and have this bullshit play out in the media? Yeah, well, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, guys, they've got to do their due diligence because if Michael Maguire allegedly, and I don't believe it, overworked his players, couldn't delegate authority to his assistant coaches, um, couldn't pick, you know, pick his teams properly, couldn't do this, couldn't do that, can't develop players, then if you knew that before you hired him, why hire him? So at the end of the day, you yeah. can't keep employing the so-called wrong people and not taking accountability for yourself. And this is where I have zero respect for the board as a whole, and I have negative, beyond below zero respect for Justin Pascoe. He's an absolute dope. So he's failed with Taylor. Um, he's failed with Madge. The one failed coach that he didn't have to sack is the guy who came in, destroyed our salary cap, and said, fuck you, I'm going off the bus. Excuse my French, everyone. But, you yeah, know, like... Got- it's time to fall on the sword. The guy has no credibility anymore. He has no, yeah. I, I just don't see any future for Pasco. But this has probably bought him another year or two. So, and and there's another one, um, Rob. There's another one. Oh, Madge can't sign players. What idiot want, would want to come to our club when you've got a board that acts like it acts? So you can but always he literally. Just... He literally finally stuff. He finally signed players. Exactly. Jackson Hastings yeah. this year, Papa coming next year, Appy coming next year. Yep. Um, Dane Laurie and came s- over from the Panthers. Sean Bloor came over from the Panthers. Like yeah. Luciano came yeah. over from the draft. Like Joff is starting to lift. Yeah. And sucking him could create an exodus of those them signings. So, you know, it's, it's, yay, it's three or four more years of rebuilding. 
the thing that sucks uh, in my mind is a lot of people are saying, and I, I think I don't. I think it might have been Lee or something. Basically, that there wasn't enough wins at this point of the year. So basically, if we won more games, then Madge would have stayed. So what kind of pisses me off about that is if Jock Madden doesn't drop the ball against the Titans, we win. If the referees if Laurie, officiate if, us like well, like a team they, in the NRL instead against, of <laughs> instead like, of well, outcasts. Even beyond the referees, Luciano or Luciano Lee Lewis should have had a try. That was the referee. But in the same game, if Dane Laurie catches the ball against the Warriors, falls over the line, we win. There's four points that we should have had without Jackson Hastings, who was suspended at that time. Like we we could Kel- have a Kelmer couple more against wins. the Dragons. That Gildart yeah, try. Yeah, Kel- Kelmer scored. Yeah. Like That's- there's just there's so many things where we could have three, four more wins, and we're talking I feel about like match. Josh, them sliding doors, mate. <laughs> That's it. That That's was it. what what I find so funny is Lee literally said to me that he thinks that this team is going to make the top eight. That's that's what worries me. Everything he says is just bullshit because he has no idea what he's talking about. He's an absolute cretin for thinking that he actually knows what he's talking about. He's just got a lot of money and throws it around. That's all it is. And we've, it's pretty bloody obvious now, isn't it? Just PR he, he has no salesman. idea. Yeah, that's it. He knows how to talk and he, he that's all he knows, knows how to talk. And he goes, oh, mate, can you tell me this? Gets a little bit of info off whoever it is inside the club and goes and spreads it out to everybody. Look how good we are. We we have Latrell Mitchell. Oh, wait, no, we don't. Oh, man, I look really dumb now, don't I? Like, it, the, the shit he has pulled in the last two years, like, just get him away from the club. I don't care if he's a major sponsor. Get him away. Or if he's a major sponsor, sweet, get off the board. There's a so conflict about- of interest there. Shane, what about his quote? Was it last week or the week before? He, he quoted the date. He goes, as of whatever the date was on that day, May the 29th or May the 22nd or whatever it was, as of that day, Michael Maguire is the official coach of the West Tigers, blah, blah, blah. And he used all his legal, uh, legal jargon to just yeah. say that nothing's going to happen. He just talks in riddles. Like the guy's an intelligent guy, but he knows nothing about rugby league. He's just a fan who's got money and he's a very good lawyer. But in terms of football brains, he hasn't got any of it. Yeah, that quote featured heavily on the um, sizzle reel that they had on 360 tonight as they um, yeah, laid out the sacking of Maj Saga. So, yeah, but the fact that yeah. you're talking in riddles, Rob, you know, you knew this shit was going to go down eventually. Yeah. Like, it was, it was almost like a full support of the board statement. Oh, yeah. Rob, a, before we will go on to Bosco, we're literally um, got a huge queue tonight. It's literally the biggest vent pod we've had. Thanks for coming on the show. Again, one last important question. Um, Bucks or yeah. that's not Bucks, bloody Warriors or Celtics? Who you got? Uh, listen, I really find it hard to pick the Warriors. Um, I'm the same. I saw them play well <laughs> yesterday, um, so I think it's going to go seven. But I'm leaning towards the Celtics over their defense. Um, yeah, and I just don't think that the Warriors are a clutch team. Got a big argument about that. I just mm. think the Celtics are a better clutch team in the end. So, yep. Celtics in seven. Okay. I, I want the Warriors to win just purely because they beat the Nuggets. They're not the Nuggets out. If they win, that makes us look better. So it's um, fair enough. <laughs> kind of kind of like when the Dragons won the comp in 2010. It made us kind of look better by only losting to them by a point. Um, right, hey, Rob. Thanks, everyone. Check boys. out the thanks, bounce. Rob. If you do like basketball, um, check out the Bounce of the Ball podcast um, with Rob Bay and give Rob. A uh, follow on Twitter, Rob underscore Aaron23. Catch you later, Rob A. Catch you later. See you, Rob. See you, Rob. Uh, Right, uh, where was knocking on the door trying to... Yeah, I'm going to have to jet. I'm absolutely pooped. I'm going to go to sleep. (laughs) Right, eh? Um, All good. Right, eh? Everyone say good night. Good night to Big Dog. Easy. (laughs) See you, Shane. See you, guys. See you, Shane. Do you remember you wouldn't you would know who Big Dog is? Any any people that grew up in the Newcastle or Central Coast area will know who Big Dog is. So on MBN up the Central Coast or Newcastle, seven o'clock every night when I was a kid, Big Dog would come on the TV and be like, Good night, boys and girls, good night, Big Dog. And that was kind of uh, how kids kids knew to go to bed. But yeah, um gotcha. For those who yeah, a bit of um bit of trivia there for those 
who uh, didn't grow up in the sticks. Uh, where is Bosco? Bosco, Bosco. Here he is. Bosco, we finally got you on. You've tried to come on a couple of event pods now, and for whatever reason, um, things came up. But finally, welcome to the West Life podcast. Thanks, boys. Good to be on. Um, how are you feeling on this uh, Tuesday night? Uh, look, I've um, I, look. I think I'm actually not. I'm not disheartened on the actual decision. However, I think it should have been done nine months ago, and I think that's the biggest issue. And I, I think Rob now put the nail on the head when he's talking about you know, um, there's no like the, the board's got no idea. Um, look, if 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 the it was clear, it was very clear from the media talk and 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 all the things that were going on for the last nine months or so now, probably even longer than that. That it was very clear that the powers that be didn't think that for whatever reason Madge was the right coach for us. Now they they knew that nine months ago. Why didn't they make this decision then? So they've essentially wasted another year now because now we're, we're halfway through the year and now they've decided off. Oh, he, he, that's it. I just don't understand why they couldn't make this decision. And even making this decision now, I heard I heard Sheen's tonight on on 360 or the, actually the press conference that they put on the website and someone, the one of the, one of them asked him about the timing and he said, Oh, you know, it's never good timing, but you know, I was, I was crook last week and mate, we had a buy last week. We couldn't have, we couldn't have a board meeting over zoom or, you know, we've just had COVID. It's been two years where, you know, like, like they wait until Tuesday to the, the day before the game last week, there was no game. And maybe 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 it was done purposely to push it under the rug because the origin, like someone mentioned previously. But look, I don't know. Look, I I think I think Maguire isn't the right coach for us, and I'm 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 basing that on off on the obviously on the team's performances. They had and I and they, I'll do say that with the with the caveat that there has been a lot of things outside his control. The injuries this year have been shocking, probably one of the worst we've had. Um, and there's obviously been, you know, inherited all the crap from from um, Cleary. You know, it, it's pretty much taken until now to get his team team that he probably really wants. But in saying that, I, I do think tactically we haven't been great. Um, but I just don't like. I just don't understand the timing of the decision. And it should have been it should have been done way earlier. And that's uh, that's that's my thoughts on Madge. I really wanted to talk. I actually really want to talk about Tim Sheens. I know. I know a lot of people were quite excited when he he was appointed that role. I just look. I've got a long memory. I remember when when Sheens when Sheens was left the club the first time. It was obviously it, um, it was obviously a, quite a bitter thing because they ended up going to court or whatever it was. Sheens hasn't been involved in the NRL for how long now? Since two thousand and ten. Twelve. Two thousand twelve. Yeah. So so he he left the club in two thousand twelve. He hasn't got a job in the NRL since then. I know he's been in England. And whatever, but no other NRL team has hired him. Now he's come back and he's been given the obviously free reign to you know run the football, football department, make these decisions, advise the board, whatever it is. People talk about our old school coaches. What about old school administrators like Sheens and like Phil Gould that the dogs who struggle who seems to be struggling a bit now? I don't know. I, I just heard Sheens sign on NRL 360, and I'm hearing the same things from 15 years ago. Uh, you know, there's been reasons, but not. I won't call them excuses. I'll call them reasons. There's, you know, we need to develop our kids. Our under 19s are great. Our under 20s are brilliant. We just need to bring them through. And the biggest, the best one of all for me was our fans need to be patient. I mean, honestly, how patient? How much patience can you ask for? We haven't made the semi-finals since 2011. Like, what other club? What other club in 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 professional? I'd love to know in professional sport anywhere in the world where. A, a pass mark is coming eighth out of sixteen teams, then you 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 haven't done it for over a decade. Like it's just, I, I just like that. When I heard that tonight, I just that that tipped me over the edge. So anyway, I've gone on a bit of a rant, but I don't, I'd love to know what you guys think. Uh, Rob, you go. Uh, mate, I agree with you, Bosco. You, you're preaching to the converted here. Um, you know, in Sheens' def- defence. He's won four premierships. You know, me and you have won none. Yeah. So, and and that's the thing. They're looking at his record of you know winning comps in what 1989, 1990, 1994, 2005, or, or whatever it is. So I agree with you. He was out of the game for ten years. 
the fact that they've put everything in his basket, like I heard Sheen say tonight, we need a coach that we know is going to be there in three or four or five years' time from now. Well, is Tim Sheen's going to be there in three or four or five years? He'll be 75, 76 by then. So yeah. I, 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 I'm not an excuses person. Like, if you know me, like, I – Every year we've missed the eight. Like, I still can't get over the fact we didn't make the eight in 2016 because Jason Taylor was a stubborn prick. He just did not want to play Rob Farrer in that first grade team. And he ultimately cost us a finals berth six years ago. Like, that still burns me now just for not making the finals. Um, I really think there are legitimate excuses. I, I, I think our cap has been absolutely shit house for three years. When Hardigan came in just over two years ago, I, I said to, to Josh, like on my first vent pod, when he said, what would you do? What would you change, et cetera, et cetera? I said to Josh, I don't know how you fix his cap. I said, we're stuck with McQueen. We're stuck with Reynolds. We're stuck with Packer. We're stuck with Madalena, et cetera, et cetera. And, mate, Hardy can fix it up within 18 months. Admittedly, we couldn't buy anyone, but he fixed things. And, and we weren't in a position this year, but next year we're certainly in a position, um, you know, to buy another marquee player besides the two great signings that we've got. So I really think we had a legitimate reason why we didn't play finals for the first three years of Madge's tenure. And I still say, as I said 20 minutes ago, finishing ninth and 11th in the first two years was overachieving with that squad. Don't say we didn't make the finals like he's a shit coach. We had a fucking shit squad. So that's the reason we didn't make the finals. Look at the roster. Go back and Google and search who was in that team. We had guys that we were plucking out of nowhere, Corey Thompson and and guys like that coming back from England and, and stuff like that. We we just had a, a pack that, thank God, we had Rob Farah and Ryan Madison in the same team in one year because they carried that forward pack. We had Benji showing glimpses of form. You know, you lose those 500 games of players between Benji and Robbie, and, and what do you go back to? You you go back to dead shit alley. Like a go, and then you can't replace that. So I don't believe the first, you know, maybe last year we could say a little bit, there was definitely issues there. But as you said, Bosco, we should have cut the cord at the end of last year if we were going to do it. Now, this year, we we, we knew we were without our best player in Dwayne. Our second best player from last year was coming off an injury, Laurie. We lost Sean Bloor pre-season. We've lost a number of players in the first eight rounds, and we've had suspensions like Jackson Hastings for three weeks, et cetera, et cetera. We actually have a legitimate number of reasons, and, and we should never have beaten Power and South. Like, how how any coach could have got that squad to beat those two teams, I think, is a remarkable achievement. So I think there are circumstances and, and genuine reasons, but if they've just had their mind made up for weeks that he's not a development coach, which is a crock of shit, well, then there was nothing that was going to make them happy other than just keep winning, 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 winning. But eventually, whether it was this year or next year, they were going to punt him, Bosco. And that's yeah. the sad part. I, I don't know how a coach works. Let's not call them an organisation. Let's just actually call them for what they are. A group of individuals who are walking by your side like Tim Sheens was yesterday, knowing full well that he was about to sack Michael Maguire and talking to him like his best mates. How do you trust people that are carrying on like snakes you know, that is not the tiger way. That's not how you, you treat people. If you've got a problem with someone, you tell them to their face. You don't do it behind their back. It's just a low act. I, I love this team. I love the colours. I'm ashamed to be associated with this club. The West Tigers club is not a club anyone should want to be a part of. There needs to be changes in there. There needs to be a clean out from the top. Justin Pascoe has been a part of that for seven years. There are other board members that have been there since before Tim Sheens was there. The problem with this club, and it's the truth, and our sponsors are West Ashfield. The problem is it's majority owned by West Ashfield, and West Ashfield's biggest interest is their club and the Ashfield community. At the end of the day, as long as they're turning a profit, yeah, it'd be nice for the footy team to be doing well, but if they're not doing well, who gives a shit? They're all going to sleep, and it is what it is, and they'll always be next year, and and there's just that loser mentality within the club. There's no desperation. There's no fire. There's no... There's no passion. I, I don't, you know, and then we've got a CEO who's meant to be representing us, has not come out with one interview, one TV interview, one radio interview, hides behind his his pathetic uh, press releases through the club. You know, thank you for Michael Maguire. We're part of ways, blah, blah, blah. He's just another coward, guys. I, I, I don't respect any of this mob at all. And there needs to be a wipeout and it's never going to happen. So if it's never going to happen, 
it's just going to keep going on, guys. It will never change. Uh, the, only time, the only time we hear from Pasco is when is when when it will come time to renew the memberships, and then he'll send out his email saying, you know, how how many members we've had, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you know, I, I've been I was a member for twelve or thirteen years, I think it was. And last year I said that's it, I, and I didn't renew this year because I'd had enough. And you know, uh, yeah, yeah, Bosco. Get when he sent Michael Shamus a video of himself celebrating the winning field yeah. goal. Yeah, he, when he was on holidays. Yeah, like, it looked like he was a puppet. Remember. Bernie from Weekend at Bernie's. Just <laughs> like dead body with his arms sliding around. The guy's got no anything. He's not a tiger. He's a fucking imposter. Just a fucking joke. They need to just fuck him off straight away. And that's the limit of swear words you're going to get from me tonight. It just, I can't think I straight what I think that. of that bloke, man. He's just, he's absolutely destroyed our fucking club and he takes no accountability for it. He'll be there fucking tomorrow with a big smile on their face and they'll all be thinking we're going in a new direction and everything's roses and it's fucking bullshit. We're, the fish rots from the head, guys. The fish rots from the fucking head and this fish fucking stinks. It absolutely fucking stinks. Couldn't agree more. Well, it went off so much, he dropped his phone. Um, Bosco, any, any final words before we uh, we head on over to uh, Tiger's Tragic? So Tiger's Tragic, um, yeah, get ready to come on. Gussie, I'll see you there as well. Um, you can come on after Tiger's Tragic. So um, big cue tonight. But, um, yeah, thanks for coming on, Bosco. Any any parting words? Uh, no, nah, look, just, just frustrated. I mean, I, I just... Like I said, when I heard the thing about being patient, I just it just hit me over the edge. And like, ugh, I I just don't know. I just I just can't. Like I've said, it, I've said it a few times before online. Like I just I re when I think of it, I know I know there's some good kids coming through, and I know there's some positives. Got the centre of excellence and all that, but I just can't see this club getting out of the hole they're in. There, you know, and 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 the thing that bothers me is that I think I think there's a there's a stigma in the NRL around you know in the people that know that that we're a loser club. And 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 that's and you know I know I know people talk about Madge attracting players etc. And and you know I, I wasn't the biggest fan of Madge in terms of his actual coaching. But why would a player want to come here? Why would a player want to come here? And I know we've signed I know we've signed a few good players like Appy and 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 Papalihi, who I think is probably one of the best back rows in the comp at the moment. Which so it's a pretty big signing. Um, why would any player want to come here when we are just there, there's just a culture, it's just a loser culture. That's that's mm. what it is. It's uh, in, and and I just don't see with this board and with this CEO and with this and with this management how the, it's ever going to change. I just, I hope I'm wrong, and I hope that we turn somehow turn a corner. But I just, I just can't see it happening, and yeah, it's just, it's just frustrating. Um, yeah, Bosco, thanks heaps for joining us, man. It's good to finally have you on. Um, yeah, we see you at a game. Um, thanks, Bosco. Don't be, no don't be strange. Thanks, but, um, yeah, have have a good one, Bosco. Thanks for thanks for your rant tonight. No problem. Anytime. See you, buddy. Uh, righto, we'll bring on Tigers Tragic John on Facebook. Are we the old Clippers? Are you talking? How old old are you talking? You're talking Chris Paul, um, Blake Griffin Clippers? Because I wouldn't mind that. That wasn't too bad. Are you talking like? Um, San Diego Clippers when they, yeah. Uh, anyway, Tigers tragic. Enough basketball. That's that's what happens when the Tigers go shit. I just want to talk basketball, but um, we'll stay on track. Tigers just... tragic. How are you going? Yeah, not bad, guys. Yourself? Not too bad. Do you have? You just want to go by Tigers tragic? We don't want to refer to you by your name at all, or? Oh, you can call me Joey if you want. Joey, how are you going, Joey? On this Tuesday, just a typical Tuesday evening. Oh, mate, you know, absolutely frustrated, you know, just the whole club, you know, the way things are run. I'm 22 years old, and the last time I seen the Tigers make the finals, I was in year six of primary school. So let's just think about how long that's actually been. I graduated school five years ago, and every year, you know, it just, the hope diminishes. And, um, yeah, I don't know, today was just like the final straw, you know, it's, clear that the club doesn't care about any of its fans or what's what the fans want because it's obvious that the overwhelming majority of the fans wanted Madge to stay. You know, everyone saw the vision that he was building, the team that he was building, the roster that he was building, and he's the only one that cared, you know. The players are soft, and 
Yeah, I don't know. If I mean, for us, it's the timing. As Rob, um, Rob said it basically all year. Yeah, why, exactly right. Like they've stretched it's just, it's, it's, now for nine months. Yeah, and... they should have cut the cord. Whereas it's just it's just a messy. Um, yeah, and like just at this point when he's about to get the roster that um, that he's built. Yeah, if if our first caller, um, Madge, is um, spot on. A few people were saying, uh, "Who was it?" It's Nick in, on YouTube. Serious question. We all t- we talk about not renewing memberships. Does anyone think about leaving as a, a supporter until Sheens, Pasco, and Co. are gone? Look, man, I've, I've been a season ticket holder for uh, since two thousand and eight. So what's that? Sixteen since you since you were in what year four? Um, so that was the last time I seen Tigers make the finals. Yeah, so before then, so yeah, <laughs> when you were in early primary school, um, which is pretty funny. I mean, I was seventeen when we won the comp, and Balmain and such West Tigers never made the semis. They were well, obviously 88, 89, but yeah, I went my whole schooling life with no semifinals as well. So I kind of feel your pain. Um, <laughs> it's just as Bosco said, it's just the the, lo- the losing culture trying to shake it off. It um. It took Benji Marshall and Robbie Farrell to um, kind of flip that for a bit. And even then, we only made the semis three times in that tenure. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's it's embarrassing. It's been embarrassing for a while to be a West Tigers fan. Like, yeah. it's, it's getting hard to argue and banter with other fans. Like, a lot of my mates have just stopped. I used to get a lot of shit sent to me about the West Tigers losing, but not a, not even getting that much anymore because I think they just feel sorry for us. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's um, <laughs> It sucks. But, um, yeah, anything to add, Rob, anything to add to what um, Joey said there? Oh, I feel bad that, you know, Joey said it in a nice way. I could have told you, Joey, you've spent half your life talking about semifinals. <laughs> if you're 22 and it was 11 years ago, that's ha- that's half your life, so... I'm 34 um, and I've spent 80 percent of my life without semi yeah. if, if I can, uh, if, if we're giving you some therapy, Joey, all I can say to you is I'm originally a Balmain fan, and we're in 2022 now. If you include the semi-finals we've made in the last 32 years, I've seen four, like so, in 32 <laughs> years. So, uh, some I think Brendan put up there, and he, and he rightfully said, if it wasn't for S, for West Ashfield, we wouldn't have a club. Great place, great facility, good to eat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know what? Maybe it was better off if West Ashfield didn't save our souls and we didn't have a club to follow. Because if we're going to follow this losing, shitty culture for the rest of our existence, just put us out of our misery now, guys. It's mm-hmm. just, it's just not a, it's not a club to be proud of. The West Tigers, it really isn't. We, we need to change our ways in a lot of ways. And the first thing is loyalty and doing the right thing by good people. And all we've done is slithered around Michael Maguire for the last few weeks, knowing we were going to sack him. They should have been men and punted him a few weeks ago if that's how they felt. So, um, no, I really got nothing else to add, Joey, except um, I feel your pain, brother, and uh, I hope it gets better for you. Thanks, mate. A good, a good comment here from Rachel. How do we make it our anger clear without taking it out on the players? Because they're obviously probably hurting from this as well. Like the booing, like, I don't know, and not going to watch them play and supporting them. Like, I'll still go on Sunday because I want to support the players. I don't go out – I don't go to games to – cheer on Justin Pascoe's team. Like, I go out there to support the players play. So, yeah, it's, it's a tough short one. Term, How... Short-term pain, long-term gain, Josh. If, you, if, if people, have to, people have to make some noise with their, with their dollars and their uh, participation and all that sort of stuff, if, if, we, if things keep, keep carrying on as normal, nothing will change. These guys just keep seeing the membership rise and rise, yet our position on the ladder has fallen and fallen. They think, well, you know, it can't be... Can't be all doom and gloom. So, I, I I admire your sentiment, and I think good on you. And you don't want to take it out on the players, but I'm sure if fans didn't show up on Sunday, they will say, you know what, a lot of people are, are butt hurt that match got sacked. Yeah, well, I agree. Yeah, because, we... you know, like the club obviously don't care about the fans, so maybe it's time the fans start showing, you know, the same attitude as the club. We got no voice, mate. We got no voice. We got no anything. There's no way to get anyone on that board. There's just no structure there. It's a privately owned club. We can't get in there. We're just the suckers that follow the club, and we just have to keep putting up with it. There's not much we can do about it. 
The thing is, though, we don't want Adam to leave. We don't want Jackson to leave. We don't want Dane to leave, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If they if they start playing in front of empty crowds and have no support, like why why would we want to give them another reason to leave? Wouldn't yeah, good wouldn't point. us to, wouldn't us turning up to games and saying showing these boys look? We know the management are fucking shit, but at the end of the day, there's twenty thousand plus of us that have got your back and want to wear like proudly, like wear your jersey and buy the. Burn. I mean, it's it's a tough one. Like, yes, it might it looks bad on Justin Pascoe's resume if the numbers start dwindling, but like I don't know. I I I go to support the team. I love I love the West Tigers. I don't. There's literally. It's beyond any player, any um, – I mean, Benjamin Marshall and Robbie Farrow, I guess. Yeah. I mean, even then, I didn't follow them to the other clubs. I mean, they're, they're at the pinnacle. I love Jackson Hastings, but, I mean, he's not Benji Marshall or Robbie Farrow yet, but I will be pissed if he leaves. But at the end of the day, I'll still go to games because I'm a West Tigers fan and, and will support them, and I want them to, to improve. I just – it's a tough at, one. Like, I, I – I, Josh, look at our history. You just mentioned the two greatest legends of our club, and our club has shit on both of them. At so, least they got them back. Yeah, they, got, they, got no, they back. didn't get. It was Ivan Cleary that got them back. They didn't want them back. Yeah. None, none of that. None of that club wanted them back. It was Ivan Cleary that got both those guys back. So it just shows you. Even on our legends, we don't know how to treat them. So there, there's just nothing in this club, from the social media department right up to the top, that they can get right. They're an absolute embarrassment to the NRL. What do you reckon it costs? We need 20,000 20, people at Concord. That's what we need. We need 20,000 people at Concord, you know, making a bit of noise yeah. rather than a Campbell. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. But um, what do you what do you think it would cost to buy the West Tigers at the moment? It's going down, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a plummeting it's a plummeting stock at the moment. Yeah. It's like real estate at the moment. But, um, I mean... We need a Russell Crowe. We need a we need a Politis or something to come in and to yeah to take take over. I think that's the only way. Um, the only way that basically the the rot that starts at the top. That's the only way you can go above the top, isn't yeah. it? Is, is buy, to buy the club. Yep. Yeah. Where's Harry? You need a Harry or someone. Um, I don't know. Anthony Wiggle, someone like someone come in and take over the club, and yeah. But um, we'll we'll head on to Gussie in a second. Tigers, uh, Joey, sorry. Um, any any final words? Thanks for coming on tonight, making your West Life um, debut. You know, just like you know, imagine inherited a team where the star players were Josh Reynolds, Ben Madalena, Russell Packer, and Moses Mbai. Yeah. Now we sign players like Api Corusau, Isaiah Papali'i. We have players like Dane Laurie, Jackson Hastings, Adam Dwayhe, Stefano, you know, Twali, a fucking defensive machine. Uh, Joffa was starting to pull his up, leg up a bit and, you know, a lot of raw potential with Jake Simpkins or signings under Madge. And yet now the club has just flushed that down the drain. We're going to have probably like you guys are saying, you know, Jackson Hastings would have died for Madge and he's been arguably our best player this season in the little amount of games he has played and who knows where he's going to go now, you know. It's just it's very frustrating. Honestly, yeah. it's very frustrating. It is. And I, mean, at the moment. I mean, and on that, as we said, the timing, if, if the sack him last year or literally when we're on, on the cusp of, like, if I, I would have given him till four to five weeks in the next year. Like, just see see what he can do with Appy, with Papa. Yeah, exactly. Like, halfway like, through. It just, it just seemed like he was it was claw, clawing back. and like, The results weren't there this year, but as we've said all night, there they were excuses. So, um, as I, I said... I'd like, like, I'd, like to see, I'd like to see how Craig Bellamy or Trent Robinson or Wayne Bennett would have gone in 2019 getting the West Tigers in a ninth place when the players that Joey's just mentioned, and, and at least four of those five, I think you, you forgot Chris McQueen in there as well, Joey. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I forgot. Four, four <laughs> there's there's five, been a lot. Four of those been five a lot. at a minimum 
we're in New South Wales Cup, Josh. There's about two and a half to three million dollars there. I challenge any coach to get a team to ninth place with six and a half million in their cap and with a club that isn't renowned for massive third party deals and, and can't compete on third party deals like the Roosters and the Storm do, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, we missed the final, so the, the year's deemed a failure. You know, and that was inherited. All that stuff was inherited from Justin Pascoe's signings. No one else, not the board, not any other board member. Justin Pascoe signed those five players and they were fucking shit. And we're still paying for it now. And Madge paid the ultimate, ultimate price for it. Joey, just quickly before I let you go, Warriors uh, Warriors or Celtics? I saw you um, in the fan as well. I'll have to go the Warriors. Okay. Warriors in seven, six. Definitely seven, but I just think Warriors have more depth. They have guys like Poole, Otto Porter, Kaminga, Gary Payton as well. Okay. Well, uh, you can go fight Rob A on that because it's opposite of what he said. So um, <laughs> we'll stop. Maybe we'll have an NBA podcast uh, in the off season. But um, thanks, Joey. Righto, righto, thanks, Joey. Guys, have a good one, buddy. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Right. Righto, Gussie. Here he is. Thanks for waiting. How are you, I lads? Saw, saw you, saw hey, you in there. The uh, man, when it comes to commenting on the live stream, you um, you you're up there, one of the one of the champions. So thanks for supporting the show loyally. You're there without fail every Monday and Thursday night on the stream, okay. pushing for likes. Um, yeah, but um, thanks for you're, coming on the show. You are more than. Go. More than welcome, my brother. I just wanted to throw out, uh, thank you guys for doing this impromptu kind of, uh, I know it hurts a lot of people, but thank you for doing what you're doing. So if people are out there, you might as well throw a little a like and a thumbs up for the crew. You're the best, Gussie. Thanks, mate. Uh, you're awesome. Any... Um, I do want to say, though, yeah, yeah, I got some input if that's cool with you. Yeah. Um, Tiger Tragic, he did mention at one point about the fans and um, – I know people talk about, you know, uh, being fans. I've been a fan for over 30 years. So I was a Balmain supporter too beforehand. But I just want a team to love, you know, a team to go for, a team to uh, to aspire to, you know, like go out to a fucking game for or to buy the merchandise. So a little consistency would be great. Uh, I want to bring more of a positive note, you know, and uh, and um, if I can ask you straight up, Bob, uh, 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 yeah, I know Bob's Bob's feeling this pain too. Love you, brother. PM twenty twenty five. But uh, wait, what about? Yeah, there's a there's a lot of young talent that we might see in the next six weeks. Because watching that interview before with Kamali and Sheenzy, uh, they were talking about next six weeks. I suppose they assume they're going to find a coach about that mark, maybe the four to eight week mark, and a lot of players and their contracts will be subject to those games and how they perform. But um, you know, you got a lot of. I assume you're going to see more of Junior Tupu, Stafford Tower, Farmer New Brown, maybe how yeah, he's going, and Stefano might start. But what I want to ask you, Bob, there and gentlemen, sorry for the jibber, is um, what about the debuts? Sione Fainu, you know, Mr. Polly, Austin Diaz, Brandon Tumith, maybe little Logan Dillon might get eight minutes like Jock Madden did in his debut. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, rules. I'm um, sorry if that's a weird question. Not at no, all. No, no. Um, it's been hard to, uh, to, to be honest. I haven't kept up with the lower grade stuff um, much this year. Seeing the juniors coming through, rules one that going back to the trial. I mean, his debut this year would have um, would have been awesome and something. And we said at the start of the year, like just seeing these young guys coming through and the team getting better, because none of us had hope for the top eight, unfortunately, with his squad, except for Lee, apparently. Um, so it's just seeing young I guys. I still come expect through. us to win the comp. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll have what you're on, Gussie. Um, but yeah, just to see young guys, like Junior Tupo's debut, that was, that's a cool story that'll get lost. Um, I guess kind of like 2006 when Chris Lawrence scored on debut um, against the Broncos and it was like the second last round of the year and we we're already out of finals contention. So that kind of gets forgotten a lot. So um, did, did he not score a hat-trick 
from 5'8 when he filled in in that same season? I think it was that against Melbourne. I think he might have. I think it was, yeah. Chris came Lyon. in, played 5'8 and killed it. Yeah, he killed it. Yeah, so that, yeah. But, Maybe yeah. not 2006, because I think it was second last round or so. He did his HSC like two weeks later or something. Yeah, well, I, when, you, when you have Tim Sheens as coach, you get to play like seven or eight positions in your career at one club. So yeah, I'm, sure he, <laughs> I'm sure he played a little bit there, Gussie. Um, I, I was going to say, Gussie. He thought Benji played, was a fullback. Uh, he thought Benji was everything. I mean, Benji basically played on the wing in the grand final. No one mm. really mentions that very much, but he, he was playing on the wing defensively. Um, that, that, with, that wasn't with, a bad ploy, though, because he kind of had to hide boy. Benji was pretty bad. He kind of had to hide him. Um, well, he was protecting the shoulder, really, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, Gussie, with those players you're mentioning, obviously they're just going to have to be played, if they're eligible, that is, in dribs and drabs. You just can't be putting a cluster of those young guys in one hit. So they're going to need some balanced experience behind it. Uh, I don't know if you caught the pod last night, but we went through like how will the team look later in the year. Um, I'd like to see guys like, once we're totally out of contention, I'd like to see guys like Luciano, Leilua and Kelma to Alangi, uh, any guys that are moving on for the club or not wanted by the club, not to be taking up those spots because we need to be giving as much game time to the players that are our future. So surely that's not too I, much. I think if I can... Yeah. Sorry, Gus, you go. I, uh, with this, this mention of of players leaving, would you assume it's Kelma, Luciano, the players that have contracts out elsewhere that may they're leave? The ones, they're the ones that have got contracts now. right now, so I, I wouldn't get rid of them now. But if they're if we can't make the finals at the moment, we can't mathematically make the finals. Just put a line through them, and even if you don't let them play New South Wales Cup, like just give them the year off. I mean, we we need to be getting our own talent more game time. So. You know, if some of these guys that you've mentioned have a lot of potential and we start them next year and they've got to get that first five or ten games next year, why don't they get those first five or ten games this year and get that first grade experience under their belt? So if you know, I'm sure Tim Sheens and the Brains Trust will be going down that path. I, I can't I can't imagine that they'd be playing Luciano and Kelmer and anyone else that's leaving the club if we're out of the finals race. I, I think that'd just be really dumb. You know, not not giving the the youth a bit of a go and giving them some um, you know well deserved match time and and game experience. How how long do you reckon that'll take, though, Rob? Of course, yeah. How, how, how long? How, how long will it take, guys? Until basically oh. they pull the pin on the season. What do you think, Gus? Uh, we're we're three or four games away now. If we don't start winning, I think it's a while mm. away. I think it's a while away. I I still think we can get Manly this week. I it's just it's just whether the players are mentally. You know, not over Madge by Sunday. It's as simple as that. If if Brett Kamali can give some sort of Churchillian speech, uh, you know, to fire the boys up. I mean, if we get a win this week and we get a win against Manly, suddenly we're going to New Zealand. You know, on twelve points with a you know with a bit of momentum, uh, it, you wouldn't say the season's over all of a sudden. You know, just like we thought the season was over after round five, after round seven, we thought, well, hang on, guys, we're we're only two and five. We're we're not in such a bad shape after all. So. A lot's going to depend on whether we win our next few games or not. Gussie, um, we'll head on to Maddie in a second. Any any last final words before we let you go? Yeah, I just want to tell everyone, keep your chins up. I mean, like Rob, like everybody, we've been supporting this game for a long time. We go through uh, hoops and bends and, you know, different kind of stages. But as fans... We've got to step up too because I do believe in this new age of footy, fans are going to play a massive part. So if anyone wants to get out and start, you know, shouting out Westlife podcasts while they're doing five-minute inputs, yeah, that'd be great it. to see too. Because yeah. you- we're, we're going to talk up some of these juniors and, and, and give exposure to the club, you know what I'm saying. Are you okay, Kiwi, Gussie? I love you. Uh, I can hear you a little bit. It's cracking up. Sorry. I said, Gussie, a bit of a hint of a that's, Kiwi that's, accent, idiot. Are you a Kiwi, New Zealander? Uh, no, nah, no. Nah, I um, I played music for thirteen years. I travelled around a lot, so I've got a bit of a hybrid accent. Yeah, right. I was trying. I was trying to pick <laughs> Sorry it. Sorry about um, that. That's all good. good. All good. No, no. I was uh, racing good voice Selby at southwest of Campbelltown. <laughs> South- uh, good on you, champion. <laughs> right, I guess he, we'll see you. I love your work, you boys. Back. Great thanks, to see Shane back. Continue support, oh, thanks, mate. Man. Get it. Get get on Shane's case. Try and get him back.
<laughs> See you, Gussie. What a legend. The best. There's no uh, no better energy in the chat. I mean, I mean, chat, we love you all, but Gussie, I mean, Gussie, he's like next level. Um, they're literally, he's, he's the first comment on the YouTube stream. We're not, we're not even live and he'll, he'll comment stuff for us. Um, love you, Gussie. Righto, Maddie. Uh, the last one we have in line. Man, we've got some, um, some youngins on the show tonight. Matty, you going, um, mate? Some, some youth on the show. It's uh, Matty. making me feel old. Usually, Rob Rob feels old in the show. I but, feel like uh, a dinosaur I'm... now. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. But, um, how how are you on this just typical Tuesday evening, Matty? Yeah, lads. So uh, I'm all right. Um, so I'm one of the elite members for West. I've been doing it for the past two years. Um, I, I, I liked doing it last year. It was a bit of fun, but COVID hit that. And then I, um, I actually got a call today by one of the workers in West and, um, he said, oh, have you seen the recent news? And I was just at home and, um, we had a chat about it and he said, oh, what, like, what are your thoughts? And I was just a bit shocked. Um, sorry, Matty, when you say West, do you mean West Tigers, West Ashfield? Oh, Tigers. West Tigers, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and I I've always loved Madge and me and two of my best mates, we all go for Tigers and my my old man, he's a South supporter and but he still loves Madge. Um from those days and you know, and me and my dad, like, we just talk so much about footy and we say, How can Madge do anything when he's just been shoved with all Ivan shit. And I always liked Ivan Cleary um, when he came and what he was doing because at one point in that season, um, that one year with Ivan, I think we were five and one to start of the year, you know. And and then I was always a fan of Madalino. I was a bit iffy with Packer, but then um, – they started all playing crap and then injuries occurred and then, you know, and then Ivan just left and it's like we had all those guys on mega money for four years. Like what was Match supposed to do? And mm. I, I, I've i I've said to my mates, I, I'm so worried about Coruscant, um, especially him, which I hope he fucking doesn't, but backflipping. Um, well, the question is, can they? I mean, yeah. it, it's the NRL. Like, fuck, what what can't happen with contracts? True. But, um, I mean, if we get Serraldo, I mean, yeah, you wouldn't, well, you'd think Appy wouldn't be unhappy with that. But yeah, he's kind Got of Eastern butts. Yeah, he's kind of Serraldo is probably the best kind of replacement. I maybe would say I'm. I I don't want us to touch Paul Green, not even near John Morris, or maybe even Shane Flanagan, like. After all his drug stuff with Canelo and all, if if we get Flano, like I don't know who he's going to attract because when you look back at that 2016 squad, they had guys like Fafita, Maloney, Ennis. They were all up there in their primes to get a bit older, you know. And like, there's a few guys in Canelo like they had like Jack Bird and stuff, but they were the young ones. And um, if someone like Bronson Jerry, if if he came back, like he could possibly be but you know with his steroid stuff mm. um, say so inject him back into the uh into yeah. The squad <laughs> yeah you know like um, who even knows if they're not a registering type thing so yeah if, if Serraldo is probably the best option and to attract someone like a Liam Martin or someone like that because he's refused to I, I think he's um not back in a contract from Penrith someone like him would be amazing but you know, like, I'm I'm really shocked that this was the, the decision to get rid of Madge. You know, like we're not going any good, but you know who's going to come in and turn the ship when Madge has never had a full year to get the players he wants, and he's already got pretty much RP, who I think is like could be the state of origin hooker over Hook, um, Cook, and Papa Lee walks in our team any day of the week. You know, and He's got those two, and 
he could have got a few more and we're looking good for 23 and could prove something but you know with him gone now like who know who we're going to sign and as they say like we've got like two million to spend our cap or whatever it is and if they were going to re-sign all our guns that we want who, who wants to come like i i seriously don't know what what goes on from here with kamali the issue is that like it just seems like they don't have a plan like it's just maybe maybe they do maybe maybe they do have a plan maybe there is someone um that they have over the line but they can't i don't know could dot the i's and um cross dot the lowercase j's and that um that sort of thing but who yeah who maybe they do have a plan the fact that there's no plan behind it is a scary thing the fact that if the the talk of player revolt it is um is scaring me but um what are your thoughts rob no the, the plan changes after every meal josh like they they <laughs> it's just constantly changing mate um i agree with everything uh you know you said there uh especially the points about like what he had to work with and 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 what we've achieved and i think now what what bothers me guys we've had we played basically 12 rounds we've had a bye so we've played 12 matches i think it's fair to say we had three poor performances out of the 12. so in 75 percent of the games we've played reasonably well we've obviously had three wins out of those nine performances what we showed against Parramatta and South, I thought was the best advertisement to any NRL player that would undo everything that happened nine months ago with a shit fight about getting rid of Madge and keeping him. And, and everyone was probably thinking, you know what, these these Tigers, that they don't have much of a team, but boy, they're putting in and they've and they're beaten, you know, a couple of really big name teams. Last year's grand finalists and Parramatta who are touted as top four. So I thought things were looking up and we're actually going to be a destination club, which I never think we have been. And the fact that we, like you said, Appy doesn't just walk into our team. He walks into, he's the best second row in the comp. Uh, not Appy, sorry, Isaiah, Isaiah Papali, I should say. Um, yeah. So, you know, we've got a couple of really good names coming and I think we've just un, undone all that work. What also bothers me is to think that if we'd have beaten South, Madge would have still been coach just gets rid of that whole narrative about, oh, is he a development coach, et cetera, et cetera. I broke the development coach stuff two and a half, three weeks ago on the show. I told you this is what they were thinking and that, that I thought it was a crock. But sure enough, Tim Sheens has verified it tonight and said, you know, look, we're looking for a development coach. So I, I don't know. I, it, look, at the end of the day, the decision's done now and we can't change it. It's just about what can we do moving forward. I, I need a couple of weeks to just let this sort of digest. Um, I was actually having nice, nice having Gussie on there before. He got me a little bit emotional, to be honest, because <laughs> he's he's actually like one of those fans you just want to give a big hug to. Not for what he said about the podcast, but just his attitude to rugby league and having a team to support. And and I know the bond it has with my boys and what I had with my late dad, and uh, you know just what rugby league means to us. So it just sucks that. You know, there's a part of me that doesn't want to watch the games anymore. And to be brutally honest, if it wasn't for Westlife Podcast, I probably would have stopped watching NRL last year. So, um, you know, but obviously, you know, this this is a, a really good fun way to enjoy my rugby league, uh, doing it with Josh and Shane and, and sharing it with the West Tigers, Westlife family, really. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just a little bit disillusioned at the moment too. And, you know, like I said, my sons keep coming up to me. Dad, when are we going to make the finals? Like, you know, am I going to have kids by then? Am I going to have grandkids by then? Like, <laughs> you know, it's getting to that point. We just had, uh, you know, the, the other guy, 22. What is he? 22. Was it Joey that was on there? I can't remember yeah. what his name. Yeah, yeah Joey. Like, yeah, yeah. He's gone half his life without seeing seeing finals. It's just like, that's just crazy. They we, We've just got a losing culture and it needs mm. to change. And, and we're pinning our faith with a 71-year-old man who, for all his good qualities, you know, he, he doesn't have the energy of a 30 or a 40 year old man or a 20 year old man, you know, so how long is he going to be able to be around for and, and all this sort of stuff. So I, I don't know. It's just, it's just a, a tough situation to be in. And, you know, most Tiger fans will just, you know, we'll wash it off. And in a month or so, like, like I said to Rob on his podcast earlier, if we beat Manly this weekend and then beat Canterbury, everyone will be saying Michael who, and they'll all be praising the club. Oh, why didn't we do this sooner, et cetera, et cetera. But, that's also the reason why I think they got rid of Michael Maguire now because they are winnable games and they wouldn't have been able to get rid of him if we did go on a winning streak. So it is what it is, guys. We can't change it. 
Yeah. Matty, we're going to bring Az on to um, preview this weekend's game. We are playing a game of rugby league this weekend, and we'll do a little bit of a preview um, with Az. But in any any parting words uh, as yeah as we let uh, you go? Um, I just think most most West supporters who have Instagram um, would have saw Jackson Hastings' story a couple of hours ago. Um, him having a fight with Madge that hit me pretty bad. But um, I didn't say I that. Do, I do but... hope. Yeah, I, I do hope he um he does stay, and because Mark and he's our next big thing with Dewey. But um, I, I just want to um, thank you boys for doing this show. I've I've been watching. I've been listening to Spotify for um quite a while, and I've actually like never really saw your faces, so it was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> Sorry about that. To see. That's <laughs> no, right. Um, a surprise no, is a good kidding. word. <laughs> More like yes, a shock. That's on the good side. More like um, a shock. <sighs> just uh, keep doing what you're doing, lads, and just keep it up because I absolutely love it. And I think every other um, person that watches and listens to the show absolutely adores you, blokes, and um, just keep it up. Really Thanks, appreciate man. that, mate. Thank you. The fact that, um, not to blow our own horn, but the fact that the show, this show, the Tigers get shitter and shitter every year and this show gets like it started out with just me with this microphone um reading west tigers news and then i brought rob rob in i brought shane in and now um we literally have yeah thousands and thousands of listeners that are tuning in and um yeah like doing this live stuff and interacting with you guys but um yeah but um maybe rob as ceo well, the West Tigers wouldn't be such a bad thing because he's 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 taken this um this show to another another level. But um yeah, so we appreciate you all, especially fans like you, Matt. And um yeah, thanks for coming on tonight. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's um yeah this this shit show gets in the right direction soon. Thanks, Matty. No, good on good on your lads. Good on your thanks lads. For on. Appreciate thanks. it. Thank thanks, you. man. Uh, as we bring Mr. Thompson. Hello, Mr. Thompson. I've never made that joke with you. <laughs> I I honestly wouldn't get the reference, to be totally honest. How old are you? Too young for the? No, you're not. You're only five years young. You don't never watch The Simpsons. Oh, yep, yep. Okay, now now I'm onto it. Yeah, you. you know name, I like the Simpsons. Ever I... said hello, Mr. Thompson, to you? Okay, another. No. Another one that felt so. Brennan said <laughs> it's dot the eyes and cross the T's. So I said cross the lowercase J's. I was trying to quote Wayne's World too. I was trying to quote Wayne's World too, and I stuffed it up. So Josh um, with all the quotes tonight. It's it's a tick of mine. If if it's if it's a Will Farrell, uh, the Simpson like Simpsons Family Guy South Park. Um, if it if it's there, I've got to I've got to say it. So uh, as I brought you on. Um, give us your thoughts just as we go on. We'll preview the game this week and I'll bring up the team list. Just give us your quick thoughts on this whole shit show. Uh, what a day. Just straight up, what a day. I actually saw the news uh, when I was taking a short break while I was at work and I still had an hour of my shift left to go afterwards. I just, I couldn't believe what I had seen. Like we had just been talking about the situation literally last night, the whole, his last game at the very least will be Sunday's game. And here we are. It wasn't even 24 hours later and his coaching, his time as a coach with us, just kicked the bucket. And I was pretty pissed off. Um, I'm still pretty pissed off. I feel like the reasonings they've given all, it's all a load of bullshit. Um, every, everything just, I really thought we had started to put the pieces into place, getting things back on track for the future of the team. Um, I agree with everything you guys were saying early on, particularly with overachieving in uh, 2019 and 2020. Uh, 2019, yeah, Rob and Matto were pretty much the main reason why we came in the where we came and then Benji and Harry Grant uh, almost together were the reason why we did as well as we did in 2020. Exactly. Um, 
Madge, he did the best he could in a shit situation. He he dragged us out of the mire, gave us fans a little bit of hope. We had to go through some dark times to get that hope. And now all of a sudden, I just feel like the hope shattered. The hope's been taken away. I want to have hope for next season. But with the, the news that your caller Madge broke earlier with the potential of losing all those guys, I'm just... I'm devastated, really. It's it's not great. Um, I love supporting the club, but it it's really hard under the circumstances. I I'm going to keep going to the games because it's. I still feel like going to the games and having the boys having the ability to cheer cheer the boys on live is good for me. Gives me a bit of a break from my day to day life at home. So I'm going to keep going for that reason, but I have no support for Pasco or Lee or any of the board or anything like that. I'll support the team. Yeah, I'll support one. Noddy. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, pretty poor much Noddy, it. Eh? I mean, I mean, yeah, I just to come in to that role. Um, yeah, I hope he doesn't cop any flack for it. I mean, he can't can't help it. You're not going to knock back a promotion, are you? So. Um, so we are playing this Sunday. You're heading to the game as Rob. Uh, actually, I haven't asked you yet if you're heading to the game on Sunday. I've got a, I've got a one o'clock function on Sunday. I cannot make it. Uh, you're too busy. You need to. No, not really. Make I just, <laughs> I just would have preferred this timing to be a little bit different. But one o'clock yeah. in the east suburbs does not suit two o'clock at Campbelltown. Ah, uh, fair enough. Um, Unless you get a helicopter. It's a long trek. See if Lee, Lee can shout your heli helicopter. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> starts. I don't even know when it's going to finish. So Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, team team list. List. All good. All good. I'm only checking. Um, right. So the team list this week, Dane Laurie, David Nofaluma is back in first grade on the wing. Stafford Toa, Brent Naden in the centres, Ken Mamalo on a wing. So that means Kepa Owa. Uh, has dropped out. Luke Brooks and Jackson Hastings named in the halves. Um, yeah, so obviously Jackson's still got his foot in a moon boot, I think, but fingers crossed he uh, still comes out and plays. And the forwards, Jimmy Tarmour, Jacob Little, uh, Zane Musgrove, Luke Garner, Luciano Leilua, Joff, Joe Offengawi, and then the bench, Jock Madden in the 14. Um, no Jakey Simkin, so we could We've got a halfback on the bench. Maybe was that Brett Kamali's choice, being a halfback himself, putting a halfback, have, running with three halfbacks in this game? Alex Twal, uh, Kelma Tuolagi, and Alex C. Far, uh, New Brown, Vanil Pohl, Jake Simkin, Junior Tupo, and Austin Diaz are all outside in that um, reserve. So no Steph as well. So um, has, have either of you heard what's going on with Stefano Utoikamanu? Uh, myself, I haven't, but to be fair, Josh, if he's not there because of form, it wouldn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I kind of mentioned it, uh, you know, on last Monday night's pod uh, that he just hasn't been right. And uh, I think me and Aaron were kind of discussing, you know, what we thought of him and, you know, we were trying to give him the benefit of the doubt with his injuries, but it was his fourth game back against South and he, he just hasn't been the same. So, I don't know if they're planning to play him in New South Wales Cup or if he's injured or, or what the case may be, but I'm not too disappointed that he's not there, to be honest. He hasn't been playing well. Alex asked, are you having – is it a function with Nick Politis in the eastern suburbs? <laughs> um, it's it's a birthday lunch for my wife. Uh, okay. Well, that's, so better, that's better than Nick. That's, my that's sons are organised, and, and, of course, they picked 1 o'clock because we've got a 2 o'clock game. Couldn't have breakfast at 10 o'clock. We had to have lunch at 1 o'clock. Man, your family birthdays are ruining your West Tigers watching. But, Killing um, me. Happy happy <laughs> week, birthday week to apart. your wife. Week apart. We got a yeah. We, she doesn't want her age mentioned on uh, with all these listeners, but yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's why I married my wife's birthday is in January. We got married in December, so no. Yeah. Um, she can she ruins the cricket every now and then, but um, yeah. So Aaron, any thoughts on this team list? Um. Jake Simkin not getting a run over Little. I mean, it's this 9v9 bat battle. I'm assuming Appy's still coming next year. 
I mean, are we going to have one of these guys nailed down the nine spot this year, or is, is it just going to go back and forth? Maybe do they yeah, do? Maybe right. they do scissor paper. When I do sport with kids, I get them to do scissor paper rock <laughs> with each other. See who goes first. So maybe maybe that's what they do on a Tuesday afternoon. They do scissor paper rock. All right, I get to play first grade this week. <laughs> Honestly, I really don't know. I really don't think we're going to get a settled um, nine for the rest of the season. It does seem like it's a bit of a, a lottery of whether we're going to get Lids or Jakey named week on week. And that, that it, for me, is the big one. Um, you guys will be aware of all of the chat in the, in the Discord. Everyone is wanting to riot for Lids being named over Simkin. Um, I'm on that bandwagon as well. I think it's it's uh, terrible. As for Stefano, normally when the club posts their team list announcement, they'll list or they'll put in brackets if a player's been dropped out due to injury or whatever. Um, Stefano isn't mentioned at all. Uh, there's no reason given for Jake being out either. So... No idea what's going on with either of them. I also did pull up the reserve grade team list, and Stefano's oh, name legend. is not on it. Mm. Um, well, well, that doesn't that kind of contradicts it, doesn't it? He's not named, not dropped for injury, but he's not dropped to second grade. So, um, if he's not in second grade, you'd have to think it has to be injury because if he's not in form, he has to. He'd be in Reggie's. It has to. Be, it has to be a whole thing. I would think then if he's not named for the Maggies. Agreed. Yeah, so, i'd I'd have to I'd have to agree with that as well. Unless it's like an undisclosed personal reasons situation. Potentially, there's been a few of those. Uh, just looking at the market, two dollars seventy five, dollar forty five for Manly. The lines six and a half towards us. Uh, Rob, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to touch uh, any. It, who knows? It could go. We the boys could come out firing and we could get a win, or they could come out their heads down and lay down and be like Anzac Day last year. Um, man, I honestly don't know what to predict with this game this week. Yeah, what's I'm, the line at, Josh? Uh, six and a half. Not enough. I I don't have any confidence mm. in that either. Yeah, do we, we know we, 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 like Sunday? What the weather? Yeah, we we got to try. Uh, I'll look. Th- I'll look that up. Yeah, you're right. Um, I was going to say, Josh, I'm I'm still not sure Jackson Hastings is going to play this week, so I'd expect Jock Madden uh, to come into the seven. Uh, who comes onto the bench? Then maybe it could be Simkin. Maybe it could be uh, New Brown. So, but I, I don't think Jacko is going to play this week. I haven't been told anything. I tried to get an answer out of their management and uh, with not much luck. All I've been told is he's just trying to look after his foot. Uh, we're looking at 13, 12, 13 to 12 degrees and sunny. My God, Campbelltown. Uh, okay. Looks like I'm wearing six layers on Sunday. Um, that's the only thing about Campbelltown. It's just so cold in winter. I know we're saying we want more games out there. Maybe, um, I don't know, can we, put, can we build a new stadium, put some heaters in the uh, in the grandstands, maybe. But um, Josh, you think thirteen and sunny is cold? I right now am. You're in orange. Three yeah, degrees. three degrees. Yeah. Try that. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably yeah. going to get down below zero tonight as well with this cold. Do you get? We've got. Do you get snow in orange? You do sometimes, don't you? Yeah, yeah. My Facebook yeah. profile picture at the moment is me with my friendly snowman. Um, we we ha- it's been it tried to snow today actually. Uh, it didn't quite happen, um, and even if it did, it wouldn't settle because it's, we've had rain pretty much constantly for the last three to four days. But yeah, it it gets bloody cold here. Yeah, I guess Sydney. I mean, I'm 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 a bitch when it comes to the cold. I freaking if it gets below <laughs> seventeen, like I get annoyed. But um, yeah, but uh, randomizer said it's members appreciation round this week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. What are we doing for that? Be interesting. I feel sorry for all the um the game day staff because yeah, 
they got a job to promote this game, but the the social media basically will have to basically be on hiatus. Just the simple. I mean, it is anyway. We talked about it last night that social media has been pretty rubbish anyway from the club this year. Um, but yeah, but uh, I don't know. Can we can we end on a prediction? How Rob, if the West Tigers win this, how are we going to win it? Um, it's definitely winnable. Whoever wins, guys, I think it's going to be a really high scoring game. Uh, if you if you're having a bet, I hate to say, it, but if you're having a bet, I'd go Tigers half time, Seagulls full time. I think we might come out, you know, a yeah. little bit fired up as normal, but. Don't uh, mind that. Yeah, then if we kind of settle down a bit and, um, you know, they get their jungle ball going. They're, look, we've got to watch Schuster. We've got to watch Olakawa too. Um, I hope we smash the crap out of Josh Alloway. Can't stand the yeah. Um, Especially the way he carried on after that fake try that he got at Brookvale. It wasn't even a bloody try. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, look, I, I think they're not that flashy, like, really in the backs. It's just Schuster. Schuster's just so creative. Um, if DC doesn't play... Well, then Schuster's going to be in the back row, so that's even worse. I'd rather Schuster was at five eight, where he's doing a bit more distributing instead of hitting the line and stuff like that. So from our end, guys, I still think you know, regardless of Madge or no Madge, we've been ripping opposition teams for numbers when we throw some shape at them. So Kenny looks like a pretty safe bet to get a try on the left. You'd say uh, whether it's from a kick or whether it's from a nice block play. Uh, so I'm expecting our left edge to do really well. I'm expecting Dane Laurie to have a big game. Uh, I just hope the boys are up, you know, and for everything they're thinking about, Madge, you know, think of the fans. Just think of, you know, the, the shit we've put up with for 10 years and just give us a little bit of, you know, a ray of sunlight in this uh, in this shitty season. So um, what more can you say, guys? But, yeah, I, I reckon there's going to be 50 points plus scored in this. It should be a pretty entertaining game to watch with a lot of good tries. As what are you thinking? Yeah, I I think Manly will get us. Um, I just think from the from the side of the view of the players, it's it's going to be really hard to get up for a game like this. Um, if especially if what was said by um, Lee is true, in the room was pretty quiet after he made the announcement, but. Mm. Um, but still, I don't trust a word that he says. Um, I I like Naden for a try in this one. I think um, he mm. might get his he might get a try this weekend. I also like uh, who was it else was I thinking? Uh, Garner's usually a pretty safe bet for a try. I think um, they've they've been a little bit slack on their edges in recent weeks, and I think Garner might be in line for a bust straight through. Yeah. Our left edge looked really good against South um, in attack with Naden and Ken. So, yeah, I like the Naden go, going left. Um, yeah, we should be sponsored by a betting agency, Rob. Um, gonna, the amount of tips happen. we give out. Trust me, it's going to happen. Okay. Um, I right think we're, we're a really good shot if uh, if Laurie fires again like he did against South because we saw what he did against South uh, the first time we played them uh, and the second time we played them. We saw how Toa did fairly well from the back against Manly last time we played them. If uh, Laurie does just as well, if not better, he, he could go a long way to winning the game for us, but I still think Manly will get us in the end. Smiling Sally and said Alex Twole to get his first try. I mean, if ever <laughs> if ever we need a pick me up moment, it's now. That that's it. Yeah. If Alex Twole get, sco- scores a try, um, yeah, we, we that would be a pretty. May not be a big crowd like out it. there, but that would lift the roof off the stadium. I reckon, regardless yeah. of how many fans are there. But um, righto, guys. Thanks for bringing up the rear. Uh, as and helping us with the preview. Thanks to all our callers tonight. It will li- literally we um, we can only have ten people in this um, the room they call it on this stream. And I was getting notifications that people were trying to get in. There were so many people in. So um, I appreciate everyone coming on to have yeah more 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 listeners than ever. Like even 
yeah, towards the back end here, you stuck with us for nearly two hours and we're still, um, yeah, pushing towards 100 people watching us. So thanks to everyone sticking solid with us. Uh, hopefully the team starts, to, I don't know, the future, because it's, it's annoying for us, us guys, because we want to talk about the club. We want to talk good, good shit on this show and talk about victories and have a, a winner's lounge, like celebration and just um i thought people just get, get sick of us kind of talking talking bad stuff about the club but um i hope this uh yeah this random random time on a tuesday night the news today made everyone feel a little bit better we're all we're all in it together as west tigers fans and um yeah thank you to everyone who supports this show um yeah, well, obviously, our next show won't be now until Monday night um, when it's the Queen's non-birthday. So, fingers crossed we can celebrate a win there. Let us know in the chat. You know how we answer, how we end every uh, every show. The regulars will know. And boys, even, doesn't matter who's the coach. Um, yeah, but uh, at the end of the day, go the Tigers. Go the Tigers. Go the Tigers.